Welcome, lords and ladies, to Tiny Kingdoms 11.0. I'm Kevin, and I'll be your guide throughout this tutorial in Update Breakdown. For this special update, we've added Halloween textures for the time being, so make sure to check out all the special textures. A big note is that on Saturday, the 12th of November, at 2 p.m. EST, we'll be hosting a tournament on the Tiny Kingdoms Discord. The winner will receive $50, and it's free to enter. Rules and further details will be posted on the Discord. Many new textures, sounds, menus, and quality of life improvements have been added to the game for this patch, so make sure to take a look down below in the description for a list of all the changes for this patch. This tutorial will be broken down into three parts, the first part being how to download the game, then the second part will be explaining how a starting kingdom could be built, and the third part will explain combat mechanics within the game. First things first, we gotta download the game. Head over to tinykingdoms.net and click on the download button. Once that's done, a zip file will be downloaded and you'll want to extract the contents of the folder onto uh, anywhere you like, your desktop, you name it, right? For now, we'll do it on the desktop just to keep it easy. Here, we see that there's the clients folder. We can just drag and drop this onto our desktop and simple as that. Inside the client folder, you will see the patch notes for this update, the how to play the game PDF, as well as the actual Tiny Kingdoms client EXE. This will run the game when we click on it. Uh, but first, just to see, here is the patch notes. Quick look, and then next we will see the how to play. The how to play will be a great guide to new players as well as this tutorial video. They will be similar, however, this will go into more detail. Finally, we're going to click on the EXE to launch the game. Now that the game is running, you can select the multiplayer to queue up, hit sandbox mode to practice, or settings to edit the volume. We'll be starting with sandbox mode to demonstrate city building. Sandbox mode does take a second to load, but you'll know you hit it right when you hear the music. Now that we're in a game, the first thing we want to do is place our town hall. You can select buildings by left clicking them, but the town hall is automatically selected when you first start a match you'll need to find a nice open area that doesn't have red squares and place the town hall. It should be close to some trees and some ore so that your resource gatherers are close to said resources. Once your town hall is placed, you will now see your territory. These white squares indicate where you are able to place new buildings. You are now able to move your camera around with WASD on your keyboard. You can also snap to any location on the minimap by left clicking. We're going to place our quarry and our lumber yard near those respective resources that we had planned out earlier. These resource gatherers are automatically collecting resources for you, so you do not have to worry about it. Next, you'll want to build one or two citizen homes to create the foundation of your gold production. Citizens will come out of the citizen home every 30 seconds and hold up to three citizens, and therefore three gold will be produced every 30 seconds per citizen. In build mode, if you have a building selected, you can always right click to deselect that building. If you find yourself running out of territory, left click the buy land button. You can left click any territory that you've seen or drag a shape to select new land. Once you let go of left click, the claim will be created. You can also add as many orders as you want that you can afford. And you can also right click to undo the previous orders. Once you're set, press the confirm button to buy the land. All land must be connected to your territory, so make sure that everything is connected. To re-enter build mode, left click the build button or press B. You can also exit any menu by pressing escape. Lastly, we have our true buildings. The barracks produces footmen, Archery produces archers, and stables produces cavalry. At the start of a match, you will want to build one or two of these buildings, and for the sake of demonstration, I will build all three. When left-clicking a building, a new building wheel has been added to allow the player to open the interaction menu on the top, repair on the left, and destroy on the right. Left-clicking when an option is highlighted will select said option. You can also double left-click a building to quickly pull up the interaction menu. Repair will also allow you to repair a damaged building with resources based on how damaged the building is. Destroy will destroy the building and give you a reduced amount of resources back. You are able to receive a full refund if you destroy the building within 30 seconds of placement or before it has contributed to the game. Now, back to the troop buildings. Each building has three categories, which have three options that can be selected by left-clicking. In total, there are 81 unique troop combinations that can be made. However, only 20 troops can be on the field at once per team. This is just a basic kingdom, so feel free to create your own strategy and start talking with the community to find other possibilities. Now, we will start with combat and movement mechanics. I have created a basic city similar to the previous section and will be attacking a dummy city I have also set up. 
Here we have various troops I have produced by using the barracks and archery. You can select troops by left clicking or holding left click to box select the units. There are three types of movements currently in the game. The basic movement is simply right clicking a destination or hold right click to draw a formation. If a unit is attacked after reaching their destination, they will chase or defend themselves. Next is guard move. Holding shift and right clicking will force a unit to stay in that location even when attacked and will defend itself as long as the enemy unit is within range. Last is attack moving. Holding control and right click will force a unit to attack the nearest target it sees on its path or you can use this move to specify an enemy unit or building target. We also have a bookmark system to allow players to save unit groups or buildings. You can simply right click any of the unit squares on the right to save the group or building. You can then select the group or building by left clicking said group and the number keys on the top of your keyboard will also work as hotkeys. Next will be a quick demo of actual combat. So here I'm going to use my actual units to attack the dummy units that I have made on the other city. We've established contact and now I'm using my infantry to take the major hits and I'm moving my archers to a close position so that they can actually target the enemy infantry. Once again, trying to move my archers around just so they are free from damage as well as using my infantry to take all of the infantry damage incoming. I only made infantry just for this example on the dummy city, uh, so we don't have to worry about any archers. Moving the heavy unit around just so I can make sure that they're taking most of the damage and keeping it away from my archers. Well done units, <laughs> you've survived and on to your next battle, but before that, we're going to show off the unit filtration system. So up on the top, we have the different types of unit chassis, their weapons, their special equipment, all the different types of things that could be used on the unit. We have the ability to select them so that you can customize. Okay, what do I want to have selected? Okay, I want to make a, a like combat group so I can bookmark it. And this is how you can quickly do that. Also, on the right of the filtration boxes, we also have just the three major chassis that you can just quickly select. Oh, I want all my infantry. I want all my archers. I want all my cavalry. You can simply left click any of the options or you can then left click them again to deselect them. We've also added and finished wooden and stone walls and gates. The wooden walls can be placed in any territory that you've seen but not claimed by the enemy. However, stone walls and gates must be placed within your own claim. Gates must be placed between two walls of either type to be placed. Only your troops can move through the gates and they will automatically open and close. Lastly, I'll show off a city siege. Now, to win the game, you, all you have to do is destroy the enemy's town hall, the big building you placed at the beginning of the game. You must destroy the enemy's version of that, and you win. That's it. You don't have to destroy other troops or the buildings, just that one big building right there. And as you can see, I moved my units on both sides of the town hall so I can get a wide net of vision to make sure I'm not getting flanked by the enemy army. Once again, I'm using control click to specify I want my units to attack that town hall. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the siege just so you don't have to sit there and wait. And as you can see, we have now won this fight. Congratulations. So thank you everyone for watching. Feel free to join the Discord to coordinate game matches with other players, ask questions, devise strategies, and hear more about future progress. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.